So welcome back. In our last video, we talked about we're going to set up our own cloud. And I know it's going to be kind of confusing because we've got own cloud as the server and the service that we use. And, and you know, I'm using like double. So anyway, setting up our, our cloud server is pretty simple. First thing I want to do is actually I want to make a brand new data set for FreeNAS. Now in my previous video when I was doing this earlier in the year, I actually my NAS the NAS that I have set up for free FreeNAS before was set up with uh RAID ZFS5, which means I can lose one of those hard drives out of three and still have all my data. And it will stay that way until either the whole array fails or I put another hard drive in replace the, the failed hard drive and I can do that and makes it pretty simple that I can um, just change drives. Now I will say a NAS setup like a RAID 5 or RAID 6 setup is not meant to be instead of backing up your data you should always back up your data somewhere else. If it's things that you really truly care about, make sure you're backing them up in more places and not just depending on your RAID um, array to save all your data. Because uh, RAID, RAID, RAID arrays can fail. Like it's, it's, it can happen. Um, if, um, if you're running RAID 5 and you lose one disk, then you're fine. You put another disk in and you're okay. But if you lose two disks in a RAID 5 setup, you're toast. Now you could go to a RAID 6 setup, which you need four hard drives to do that and you could lose two drives and still be okay but when you lose the third drive then your array fails so you know just keep those things in mind raid is not meant to be a replacement for backup it's just a it's just a it's just another fail safe in the mechanism of backing up multiple times right so for this free nas box the originally i had three one terabyte hard drives that made up my very first pool of drives which is this 2.1 terabyte um disk that sits here at the phoenix phoenix media which is where i currently have all my movies for cody um and some other assorted files that are in here now you can see that there's only 639 gigs left of that original uh, volume of files of the volume of disk rather so it's getting pretty full and then I have a second pool that's only one drive this Phoenix this PHX render volume is only one drive um, it's a 500 gig drive that I use when I'm rendering I put all of my files on there when I'm rendering and it pulls from one place across all of my render servers to be able to um, get those resources maybe one day I'll do a video on my actual server farm that I have as well because I have a four node server farm with about uh, I think uh, yeah 120 128 gigs of RAM in that farm and close to uh, 24 48 cores in that farm which I just use for rendering and stuff for clients and things like that so what I recently did was I expanded because I was like I'm going to be running my own cloud server I want to expand the amount of media and the amount of storage space that I have so currently right now I pay about about seven dollars a month to have Windows uh, Microsoft Office and a terabyte of storage space what I did which to me is caught more cost effective is that I also went and I bought three two terabyte hard drives so that those three two terabyte hard drives are running in raid 5 and you can see that effectively I have 5.4 terabytes of space now I could have gone and got four four terabyte drives or three terabyte drives but for cost effect cost to be very cost efficient there was a sale on two terabyte drives for about 60 bucks or 70 bucks so that wasn't that bad as opposed to a four terabyte drive which would be right around about a hundred dollars right now they're going for so they've been three hundred dollars in drives as opposed to spending half of that and yeah I only end up with like six terabytes of space but that's a lot of space um, realistically so I've got my PHX media pool too and if you don't know how to set up volumes maybe I'll do a separate video because I'm actually gonna switch out the media the PHX media pool for more two terabyte drives so I'm gonna end up having 10 terabytes of space in this free NAS uh, server when it's all said and done 
So anyway, you can see right now I'm already running. I already have an on cloud uh, data set in here, but I'm going to make a brand new one. So I'm going to make sure that I'm in my PHX Media 2 pool. So there's the pool right there. And I want to go ahead and create a new data set. And I'm going to name it. So cloud server. And I can give it a compression type. I can turn off compression so nothing's compressed. I could leave it to inherit the LZ4 compression, which is the recommended one. And then I could change that to gzip. And I could do like gzip and do maximum, which can really, really tightly compress this stuff, but it's really slow. And then I also could do ZLE, um, or I could do LZJB which is as it says it's not recommended so I'm just gonna leave this on inherit I can do a share type and the share type is gonna be a Windows type share and then I can set my case sensitivity either make it sensitive insensitive or mixed and then I can also turn on the ATOM and do make it inherit or turn it off turn it on I can also turn on ZFS deduplication Z deduplication is a really cool feature but it also slows down your read times and your performance can drop dramatically because what deduplication does is that the file system will look at your files on this data set it will constantly, it will constantly be mon monitoring this data set and looking to see duplicate files if it finds duplicate files and it's looking at files at the at the zero one um, stage of things if those files are exactly the same it tries to get rid of the duplicates and only keep the most up-to-date file. Now, I do use ZFS deduplication on my one uh, drive, on that Phoenix render drive. I use it on that drive for a specific reason, because I'm rendering and I don't want to have duplicate files of the same things that I'm rendering. So. I do it on that particular drive because I don't want duplicated files on that drive or on that share right so you can turn deduping on it's just gonna take a hit you can see you can do on you can do verify and you can do off verify actually ask you hey do you want to get rid of these files that are duplicate files or what do you want to do with them so I'm also gonna activate advanced mode so I'm gonna hit advanced and in here, I'm going to give a quota for the data set. I'm going to say that this data set is only going to use, you know, a gig. So I'm going to make it 100M, and then I'm, I'm going to reserve the same amount of space on the disk for that. And I'm going to hit Add Data Set. And give it a second, and it will actually add my data set to my free NAS box, and I'll have a brand new data set in just a second. So as this is making this data set, you can make the thing about FreeNAS, if you've used FreeNAS, you can make tons and tons of data sets. You can set up as many data sets as you want to. So you can see right now, now I have a brand new data set. And if I look at this data set, you'll see I've got cloud server and it's basically a gig in megabytes. And you can see this other cloud, this other own cloud uh, data set is in gigabytes. So this is a terabyte of space basically and I'm using two terabytes of it and the compression ratio on this on the one that's already been established is a compression ratio of 4.06 times compression so that's actually really good because it's, it's, it's compressing things down and not using up space that I don't want to use um, so these files aren't bloated for no reason so here this is my new cloud server data set and this is where my new cloud server will, will live when I connect the data so next thing I want to do is be able to set up the plugin and that's going to be pretty easy and we'll do that in our next video.